Uh, welcome to our talk. Uh, we'll be giving a talk on uh, sketching pipelines using uh, DAG authoring user interface. So, yeah, before we start, I'll just uh, give a short introduction about us. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's me, uh, Amok Desai. I'm uh, currently working as a software engineer at uh, Cloudera. And uh, uh, as a part of my day job, I slightly got interest into Airflow uh, uh, around, the around March this year. And uh, I've been contributing since. Uh, so uh, yeah, luckily I was uh, announced as a committer yesterday. And thank you. Yeah, so off the clock, uh, I spend some time playing and watching sports because I think that our mental health is as important as our, as our physical health and we should all uh, spend some time uh, playing sports and doing some physical activity. Uh, and uh, yeah, to get my day-to-day -day stuff working, I need to have a lot of coffee as I think many of you might relate and that makes me a coffee connoisseur. So yeah, uh, during vacations and uh, 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 during times when I'm not doing work, I find a lot of solace in trekking the mountains and uh, you'll find me trekking some mountain somewhere in uh, somewhere when I'm not working. So hey everyone, this is Shubham Raj and I'm a software engineer one at Cloudera. I'm also a full stack developer working with Cloudera data engineering team. We make products which make life easier for the data engineers. I'm a public author with a book chapter in Scrivener Publishing. I'm a 2022 graduate, holds a BTEC degree in computer science. And uh, I love playing badminton and cricket in my free time. And I'm an ambivert, which my friends calls me. So yeah, let's get started with the presentation today. Okay, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, before we try to uh, give you the solution or what we are trying to do here, I would uh, slightly like to focus on the fact uh, about why we need it. Uh, because uh, yeah, unless we know that very clearly, we always uh, tend to find a solution first. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so I think that uh, by far the biggest barrier for uh, all the new users to Airflow is uh, actually the most basic portion, which is creating the DAGs itself. Uh, that's because uh, writing code is usually error prone and it requires a lot of uh, trial and error. So any way to minimize coding and uh, the manual configurations will uh, dramatically uh, streamline the development process. Then, uh, although it's a bane, uh, we know that although it's a boon, we know that Airflow offers about uh, hundreds of operators, and uh, but users only tend to use a couple of them or a subset of them. So, yeah, making the most uh, common ones as uh, readily available as possible is very critical to reduce the development friction. Uh, then we come to templates. Uh, we know that uh, Airflow DAGs are a great way to isolate pipelines and uh, uh, monitor them independently. Uh, but making it, uh, which also makes it very uh, operationally friendly for uh, data engineering teams. Uh, but a lot of times when we uh, looked across the airflow DAGs that we use, uh, we noticed similar patterns uh, where the majority of operations uh, were very identical except for a series of uh, a few configurations. Uh, let's say uh, the table names, the directories, etc. Uh, this is the 80-20 uh, rule clearly at play. So this sparked the idea of uh, having a drag and drop editor. Uh, so yeah, uh, now that we know the problem, we'll come to the uh, solution. So uh, yeah, uh, what exactly is the DAG authoring UI, right? So uh, it's an interactive interface that we are trying to provide to a user where uh, a user gets a, a canvas and a few drag and drop uh, operators. So we're trying to promote the uh, low or no code uh, approach here. And uh, by that, we mean that you can uh, literally create uh, multi-step pipelines uh, with just a combination of these out-of-box operators. Uh, a few operators that we internally have as well as uh, the usual ones. So we have the CDE operator, which is uh, basically, uh, it's an operator which helps you uh, uh, launch uh, data engineering jobs uh, into an experience known as a cloud era data uh, engineering. So this allows you to uh, like launch um, uh, Spark applications that do data engineering work. Similarly, we have the CDW operator. Uh, this is again a similar operator, but this allows us to uh, uh, this allows us to launch again uh, uh, Spark jobs into an experience known as Cloudera Data Warehouse, uh, and the usual Bash operator and Python operator. So uh, yeah, certain sometimes uh, advanced users uh, they would not benefit a lot from this, but for those users, uh, what we have is uh, they can use this to bootstrap their initial uh, uh, pipeline so that uh, it reduces their uh, time uh, and, uh, and reduces the friction. They can bootstrap it and then later modify it as they need. 
so yeah another possibility we have is uh, you can uh, create your uh, uh, create your dags using the dag authoring ui and uh, later you can manage it using any other method like the cli or the api or the user interface itself uh, yeah so the next question that might uh, come naturally is uh, where does it fit in so as i very briefly mentioned it fits very comfortably into the uh, cloudera data engineering experience so uh, cloudera data engineering is also we abbreviate it as cd so this is part of a bigger uh, ecosystem known as cloudera data platform or the cdp uh, so very simply cdp is a hybrid uh, data platform uh, cd is known to focus on data engineering based on spark airflow and yeah uh, we have a concept known as virtual clusters which is nothing but uh, a logical unit where a user ends up uh, launching their workload jobs uh, so yeah uh, so we host a, uh, host an instance of apache airflow with each of our virtual clusters as well as we host uh, something known as a pipeline service and pipeline service is the one which hosts the dag authoring ui which we'll be uh, shortly touching so hey here you can catch a glimpse of our talks teaser but do not worry because we have a live exclusive demo for all of you that's sitting in this room so before that let me tell you about the pipeline engine like it is designed to act as intermediary layer between a user interface and the airflow job execution each box whatever you saw here each of the boxes what you are dragging and dropping on the editor's page is uh, this are like uh, corresponding to one of the specific tasks within the airflow job and these tasks are organized into multiple steps that uh, collectively define our data pipeline these pipelines definitions are like uh, typically stored as a dsl in the format and uh, in the json within the cd itself so this intermediate state encapsulating the, the pipeline structure and logic offers flexibility and compatibility to the users furthermore the intermediate state of the data pipeline represented by these definition files offers considerable versatility so this means like uh, the user can leverage version control systems to track the changes collaborates with the team members and ensure like reliability and reproducibility of the data workflows like now this brings to me one more point the templating which i will be soon covering that so you can see uh, how this does this go forward so the process described in was the efficient uh, use of the airflow here so the safe definition is automatically generated as a airflow dag and then what it does it is uh, generated dag is then loaded to the airflow api server making it accessible for scheduling and execution and for the steps so once the dag is loaded can execute tasks according to the workflow whatever you have defined and the output can be processed and needed and depending on the workflow requirements so once this process is going on the python code has been generated meanwhile whatever you because you have not written any python code for the dags you have just using the editor ui so the python code will be generated and it's better like you can customize this also and you can modify also and this customization allows you for the flexibility and adaptability like submitting a new job like once the customization to the python code has been done the modified dag can be submitted to a new job as a new job to the airflow system and uh, this means that dag along with the customization as can be run as a distinct instance too so overall this approach like avoids the need to create new workflow each and every time and from the scratch instead it builds upon an existing blueprint what you have it so making more efficient and adaptable uh, to the specific uh, use case so this method uh, clearly clearly streamlines the process of defining customizing or like executing workflow in airflow so uh, you uh, let's uh, i was talking about templatizing the airflow so this uh, i will cover this so like we have a feature which allows a uh, user to templatize their pipeline workflows too this means that uh, no need to hard code all the values user can use the placeholder in the workflow definitions which like uh, making the pipelines more flexible and reusable so like it enables users to pass job specific parameters down to the airflow for the enhancing like flexibility again to take the full advantage of this capability user can leverage uh, zinza templating in their job definitions so you can see below two uh, images there one in the left one on the right so left is the query how we are using it you can see that the conf1 and conf2 being the dynamic parameter we can pass this throughout when you are running the airflow job and on the right hand side you can see the cdw operator which i just told that what it is you can just write on the query and you can see the dynamic usage of uh, all the values whatever you will get from the running while running of the airflow job so in summary like airflow templating coupled with cd's job operator parameter passing and this use the zinza templating in job definition offers a robust and flexible framework 
for uh, managing and optimizing one of the data pipelines, making them more adaptable. So yeah, uh, once the DAG authoring templating is done, you, you write and save the DAG. And the most importantly, you can, once you, the DAG has been made, you can trigger it from the, all the three options. You have the CD UI, which, is, which we've shown you, or the, you also have the CD CLI option. And anytime you can hit our API servers, API store to do this. So CD CLI, I will just have, a, I will show you the command how you do that. So this is a CD job run. Config you pass the account, whatever conf you want to pass it, and then the name of the Airflow job. And then by this, like uh, you can see that due to the templating, you can use the reuse the DAG multiple times, like generating multiple SQL reports with a single DAG. Like you highlight the primary purpose, like which is like perform the data processing and generate SQL based reports. The DAG can be configured to run multiple SQL queries because of this templating. You can uh, change the values and run it again and again according to the need and uh, with a single workflow execution. Okay, so yeah, that was a lot of content out there, right? So uh, I'll just summarize so that uh, you don't lose a track of things. So yeah, what we're trying to do here is that uh, uh, end of the day, we are trying to uh, help users create and manage DAGs uh, just by uh, using a drag and drop. Uh, so uh, each block uh, that we uh, uh, allow you to use is a, a Airflow task. So uh, basically user gets a canvas and uh, they get uh, the drop operators. Uh, they are free to drag and drop whatever they want. and uh, yeah, that, that doesn't end it, right? So once you drop these operators, uh, you want to establish relationships between it. And that is how the DAG is made. So uh, you can do that by using a click and drag action. Uh, so it's basically like pulling or pushing between uh, two uh, boxes uh, to establish a relation. Uh, yeah, I again want to emphasize that uh, we don't, uh, we want to uh, solve the problem of uh, no need to code, but uh, just drag and drop. And uh, yeah, the DAGs generated uh, here uh, can be edited or managed later using the uh, API CLI or the user interface. Okay, so after doing all this, uh, oh, what value are we generating so far? So yeah, so we are actually, uh, we are lowering the barrier for uh, these data practitioners out there who want to uh, schedule and manage their DAGs, but, uh, but they don't want to go ahead and learn uh, they don't want to have a steep learning curve, like learn uh, Python, learn basics of Airflow, and so on and so forth. So yeah, no need to learn any new tools. Uh, then uh, going further, uh, we uh, this is a good tool for, uh, for, for the use case when you want to go and uh, experiment a lot with your DAGs when you're creating them initially. So uh, we allow you to do everything within the tool itself. So uh, you don't need to have any external dependencies. You develop and test in the same, uh, at the same place. And uh, we have been shipping this out uh, in, in our uh, CD releases for uh, some time now and a large proportion of our customers, they're using it and they, uh, they quite appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so far, where are we now? So uh, right now we have a fully functional uh, DAG authoring UI. We have been, as I mentioned, we have been shipping it uh, for a few releases. Uh, the operators that we support on the, uh, the canvas so far are uh, the CD operator, the CDW operator the Python operator and the bash operator. Uh, many more is something that's coming soon. And uh, the ability to uh, the manage the DAGs uh, that you create from the authoring UI is uh, possible through the API and CLI. And uh, very recently we added this support uh, where you can install and run these uh, third party operators. Uh, by third party, I mean all the operators that are present in uh, the Airflow documentation. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little, a little adventure here and try out a live demo. So uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, so yeah, we are starting with a live demo here. So you can see what on the screen is the first page, landing page of the Cloud Data Engineering. We will go soon, we go to the jobs page and uh, we will try to create a new Airflow DAG using the editor's UI. So we will select uh, the job type as Airflow and we will give some name to it. Let's call it at Airflow Summit Live Demo Live. So we'll select as editor for now because we wanted to use the GUI feature and let's create. So as uh, we discussed about this is a no code, no code or low code thing. So it will basically help us to write the minim minimistic code and use the feature instead. So you can see the editor page has been opened now. So here you can just drag and drop uh, all of your operators and uh, lineage it. 
So we are experiencing a slow network in this. Just wait for a minute. Uh, do not worry, we have a backup plan also with us. We have recorded this previously too. Okay, I will switch to the recording then. Okay, so we are just creating the airflow. Till now we have shown you. And uh, once this is loaded, this is how the airflow UI uh, editors page looks like. And you are just dropping this, uh, we have dropped, just drop, drag and drop the cell operator and we have written the whatever the task you need to do in the that, which is echo something. And now we are using the Python one, which is something we are printing out here, like uh, hey participants. And similarly, we can uh, get all the CD job and uh, CDB, CD, CDW query. So CD job is nothing but the Spark job, which we have already created in the, which already created previously. And we will just select uh, from the drop down like what all what job we need to trigger when this airflow task has been done. So after this, we are creating a lineage here. So I, I've also added one of the shell script last just to as a making it a bit more complex and uh, just last task and we will save this. And what it will just do in backend, it will just uh, make a, the, as I told internal pipelines thing, it will make a DSL out of it and it will make a file and it will put it on the Airflow API server for the executions and all. So here you can see, uh, on the code, and this is the Airflow UI, which all of you will be familiar of. When you click on the code, you will see all of the code automatically written here, which is, uh, you can see the, all the dependencies are here, and then you have on the DAG code here, and then the shell operator, what you have used, and then the Python operator, and CD job too. And at last we have the lineage, all of things. And then you can select on the graph to see what actually you have made. So you can see here, and we have started running the job, and uh, all the green means that it's been successfully executed. So you can see the, all the logs here for all of the operators, whatever you have selected. So shell one, Python one, all the operators have been selected here. So this is the run ID of uh, whatever job you have ran, and this is one of the Spark Pi job what we selected in the CDE operator. So that is also been triggered here because we are using Kubernetes executors to do that. And then again, back to the Airflow UI. You can see all, all the three of the task has been completed successfully. We are waiting for the shell two to complete it. Okay, now this is the CD job. Uh, you can see all it's executed with a zero code. That means it's unsuccessful. And this is how all the operators run and uh, all of shows the logs here. So yeah, this is all about the live demo. Okay, so yeah, now the future plans. What we are going to introduce much. So more operators, both internal and external operator based on the usage we are going to support. For now we have like CD operators and all, we will uh, we are soon be trying to have all more operators, which is external also and which internal also. UI improvements is one of the things which is repeatedly doing, we are trying to do, and we're trying to make it more user experience smoother and uh, probably with less, more smooth uh, for drag and drop options. And auto discovery for auto completing various technologies, various configurations while defining DAGs. Suppose you are writing a air for, uh, based upon the Spark uh, jobs, it will show you the more, uh, Discovery is whatever you want to write upon. Ready to use pipelines and uh, LLM integration. Uh, this is one of the highly talked thing about. Generating DAGs using a description through text. And at last, not the least, use the pipelines engine for the Spark applications as well. So uh, if any questions, you can reach out to us on of our social handles and we are open to questions now. Any questions from the 
Uh, thank you for the pre uh, presentation. It's really a nice idea. So uh, my question is mainly around the translation engine and your DSL. So for example, when we create a DAG using the UI, eventually, of course, it's a DAG file, right? Can I take that DAG file, update it in my editor, then upload it back to the system? Is that supported? Or once I use it, I can only use a UI to... Okay, uh, so that. yeah, I'll answer that. So uh, your question is basically that uh, uh, when you uh, when it generates to the intermediate stage, uh, is it a one-time thing or can you can you process it later for... Uh, uh, no, it's more about can I only manage that in the UI or I can also manage that just like how I manage it. You can manage it outside of the UI. Uh, the intermediate stage is something that we also store in one of our... Uh, we store it in our internal... Uh, uh, like. We mainly we are working in the on-prem, so we store it somewhere in a uh, in a ozone or any other bucket. Uh, it can be consumed from there, and you can later process it without the UI as well. So it's like two way. You can use you can use a UI to generate a DAG. You can also load a DAG into a UI. You can also load a, a DAG into the UI. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, no. No. I didn't get the question. But okay. So let's say you can translate a DAG yeah. back into your DSL, or you can. No, you can't. Uh, right now, you can't do that. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Um, great project, meaning I have had customers ask me a lot of this kind of flexibility outside too. So kudos to that. So currently, this, since this is an open source summit, do you have any plans to externalize that DAG generation outside and open source it so that the community in general can benefit? There are more users okay. that uh, want to go ahead and use this kind of a feature in their own Apache Airflow environments and may not be, or may necessarily may not be using Clouder alone. Okay, yeah, I sort of expected this question. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, right now, yeah, we haven't thought about it, I would say, because uh, uh, yeah, if, I mean, uh, you know that Clouder is big on open source, right? So if you can obviously get enough maintainers for it, uh, why not? We'll actually, we'll actually consider it. Sure. Any other questions? All right. Sounds okay, like let me on. ask a last question before winding up. So uh, a good question. So uh, if, yeah, can we, uh, if is anyone, if we make it open source, uh, would people be interested in uh, uh, helping in maintain it. So I, any of you? Any open source project is maintained by a group of team yes. and people, right? So yes. once you open source it, it's up to not only these people out here, probably the whole Airflow community may mm -hmm. be able to chip in as well. Of course. So you might have to test the waters in there to understand uh, how, uh, how how many people sign up for, and of they course. can go ahead and make their own custom implementations on their own Apache, and there might be more requests just like we maintain Apache. Of course, of course. Together. So yeah, good point. Maybe I can start a dev list email on this, and we can sure. we can discuss that. All right, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.